the resistance of consciousness. Even if the majority was blind and underestimated this red mentation, which was from the beginning against history, some people realized that it was important to resist. It was a resistance of consciousness, but it was difficult to convince the others. This new reality was beyond their imagination. In the beginning, they used only their economic welfare against the Bolsheviks. They thought that it would be sufficient, but it was an error, a big one, at the strategic level. Even the help in the Russian civil war was not efficient, because all the time they thought that it was only a local approach which concerned only Russia. They understood their error only after the full control of Russia by the Bolsheviks and the partial control of Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and of course, Ukraine. At this point, it's interesting to see the analogies with the current situation. At that moment, only Winston Churchill and perhaps Woodrow Wilson were really able to understand the situation and to see the next steps, even if at that time the Soviet Union wasn't created. But all the signs were already there. The chessboard was ready before the game of war. So let's begin from the start. At that time, we are before 1922, so there is no official existence of the Soviet Union, and we have to find some signs that what is going to happen at the end of the process may be a strategy. The first error was to see this problem as a local problem, a local approach, which is in fact restricted to the area of Russia. The red maintention of Bolsheviks was that Russia was only a starting point. In fact, it's only due to some mistakes that they consider after those that they should be restricted in Russia. So the area of Russia is rather different from the Soviet area. It's important to see that because in fact it was bigger. So to resist, they tried to make a robust call and avoid problem at the ages of the Russia. But at the same time, they tried to have the control of many Soviets, so-called Soviets at the end of the process. So, uh, for example, the three in Caucasus and of course, Ukraine. It's interesting to see that even if at that time they had only the partial control of these areas, they declare in 1922 that in reality all these regions are belonging to the Soviet Union. It was the same also for the Baltic countries and a part, of course, of Finland. So the chessboard was ready before the game of war. Uh, it's only um, a sentence to explain that before any 
chess game, we have to put the pieces and the pounds on the chessboard. It's already something which is aggressive, in fact. It's just a little bit more than something which is neutral. Neutral for a chessboard is to be empty. When you put the pieces and the pounds, there is no more neutrality. You have white, black. So you have a field. You have to choose. But the way you put the pieces and the pounds, it's not relevant because it's always the same. Remember that in shogi, you put them in a quite different way and you have, in fact, a series. So you know the level also of your opponent. In this framework, we can see that Soviets uh, were playing the game of war before the starting point of the chess game. So it's rather strange, you see, because they started before and they wanted already at that time some targets for the future. But it was before the creation. This is a strange point of this fact.